If you go to command palette and source for graph, you have this option to open a local graph. If you click on it, it will open a new tab with a local graph. Local graph is a simpler version of the Obsidian graph, which filters graph only for the open node, the node that is open in our editor right now. So you will be able to see all the links and connection between this node easily into this new tab. And you can also drag this local graph to the sidebar, just like this. And you will always have this local graph into your sidebar so that you can always view the connections between these different nodes and you can also easily navigate between these nodes uh, from uh, this local graph view. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on Obsidian. In this video, we'll talk about some of the best tips and tricks to help you level up your game in Obsidian. These tips will help you navigate your knowledge base like a pro. So without any delay, let's just dive in. Multi-cursor editing allows you to create multiple cursors. By default, you only have one cursor, which means whatever you write will be written at the position of this cursor. But you can enable multi-cursor by holding the option key and selecting the position where you want your next cursor to be. So now you can see we have two cursors. We can create multiple cursors like this. And if you write something, it will be added simultaneously at all of these positions where you have set the cursor and you can also edit the text like this. When you pin a note, it will not be replaced by another note. You can go to command palette to pin the note. You can enable the toggle pin option or you can directly click on here and you have this option to pin and unpin the note. If you pin the note, when you open links from this note, they will open in a new tab. But if you have not pinned that note, they will open in the same tab, which means they will replace the currently open tab. Now, let's say I pin this note and I want to navigate between these different links. This will create a new tab for these links. But if the note is not pinned, these notes will open in this same tab. You can take this tip to pin the note one step further by adding the note to the sidebar. Let me show you. I have this task dashboard, which I always keep on the sidebar. So you can just drag this note to the sidebar and it will be over here and you can pin this note. If you don't pin it, it will disappear when you reopen your board. So to stop that from happening, you can just pin this note in the sidebar. This permanently fixes the location of that particular note to the sidebar. And this can be helpful in many cases, such as you can create a new note with a link to important notes in your world and you can place it on the sidebar so that you can easily access all the important nodes at a go. You can create a new node in a new tab or you can open an existing link in a new tab. To create a new node in a new tab, you can go to command palette and search for new node and you have this option to create a new node in a new tab with the hotkey command N. You can either do it by the command palette or you can use the hotkey command N and it will create a new node. But if you already have links in your node and you want to open that node in a new tab, you can hold the command key and click that link and it will open in the new tab. Right now I am holding the command key and if I open this node, it will open in a new tab. But if I don't hold the command key, it will open in this same tab. I find most of the things in Obsidian can be done by hotkeys. You can perform almost any operation that you want in Obsidian with the help of commands. You can assign a hotkey to different commands by going to settings, hotkeys, and here you will have all of the commands that are available and you can assign hotkeys to all these important commands. For example, some of the most used commands in my world are toggle the sidebar. I can just use the hotkey shift right arrow and it will toggle the right sidebar and I can just use the shift left arrow and it will toggle the right sidebar. Similarly, I have other hotkeys such as option left arrow to go back to the node, option right arrow to go forward to the node, option F to open the quick switcher. I have the command return hotkey to cycle between lists and checkboxes. If you want to create a checkbox, you will have to manually do it by writing the markdown syntax, right? So this is a checkbox. You have to spend so much time this is not a lot of time when you are just creating one checkbox, but this time can accumulate to be a lot. So I can just use the hotkey command enter and cycle easily between these list, paragraph and checkboxes. Some other commands that I use are command W to close the note, command shift T to reopen the note, option D to delete the note, command shift M to move a note to the particular folder and command shift R to reveal the location of that note in explorer 
you can assign a hotkey to almost all of these commands in obsidian and if you frequently used some of these commands then you can assign a hotkey to save you a lot of time slash commands is a better way to use the command palette in obsidian it is best used in the editor mode you can go to settings core plugin and here you will have the slash commands core plugin trigger commands in the editor by using the forward slash key you can go to the editing mode and use the symbol slash and it will open this window where you can source for different commands like this all of these commands are available directly through the editor with this slash command core plugin just like slash command workspace is another core plugin uh, if you go to settings core plugin and go down you have this workspaces it allows you to create a sort of template for your different working environments then you can easily switch between different working environments based on what you are doing at the moment so i have assigned the hotkey option l to switch between different layouts i can go to uh, these layouts easily and pressing the hotkey option l will throw these different layouts that i have created in my world this can be very useful when you use Obsidian for multiple purposes such as task management, knowledge management, planning a project, etc. All of these different goals require us to have a different workflow or different setup and different layouts. So the workspace plugin becomes very helpful in that case. Link preview is another core plugin in Obsidian. If you go to settings, core plugin, and you will have the link preview, page preview here. You can hover over an internal link to preview its content in editor mode press control or command while hovering so here's the link if you just hover over it it will not do anything but when you hold the command key and hover over this link it will display the preview of this link and you can also hover over these links and it will create multiple instances of this preview this can be very helpful when you want to quickly preview the content of the note and you don't want to open the note in a new tab obsidian also supports adding images to your vault if i go to my clipboard i have some images over here i can add these images to the obsidian vault directly without having to manually copy from the file explorer you will need to go to settings go to file and links and here you have this option to choose the location for new attachments where do you want to store all of the new attachments uh, that are added to your vault you can either choose vault folder or a specific folder or same folder as the current file or in a soft folder under current folder so i'll choose the vault folder for now but if you are adding a lot of attachments to your vault then it's suggested to use a particular folder or other options from here so i have this image in my clipboard let me go to editing mode and if i just select this image now the image will be added to my vault this is a screenshot and this screenshot is added to my vault uh, currently i'm using this plugin imager all the images that are added to my vault are directly uploaded to the cloud so that my vault stays lean so you can see the image is uploaded to the cloud and it is embedded in my node if you are not using the plugin the image will be embedded over here and the image file will be added to this vault's location if you use a lot of images in your world then it might be important to create a consistent format for your nodes you can create a consistent width or height of the images by just writing this pipe symbol and writing the width of the images or the format that you want the image to have so i'll just write uh, 500 and the image will display in a smaller format if you do not specify the width or height it will have its original size but when you specify the width or height it will try to fit into that just like copying images from your vault you can also drag and drop different attachments to your vault so let me show you let's say i want to add this i can drag this pdf and the pdf will be added to our vault first here is the pdf because we set the location to be our vault folder and in the note where we drag that file it will create an embed you can see here there's the embed to this pdf file this is the one way to drag and drop uh, files in your vault another way is to create absolute links in your vault which means you won't be able to preview the file or attachment in your vault but it will create a link to that file so let me show you by example I'll go to forklift and I can just hold the option key and drag this 
and it will create an absolute link to the file. This way the attachment or file is not copied to our world. This is the one that we copied previously from the drag and drop. I'll delete it and if you click on this, it will open with the default app that you use to open that file which means you can press the option key and drag that file to create an absolute link but if you want to copy that file to your vault as well then you can just drag and drop it will copy that file to your vault first and then it will create an embedded link if you want a certain note to be always on the top for easier navigation then you can easily do it by prepending the note title with numbers symbols or emojis i have used the numbers here 000 home 001 garden to these notes so that they always stay on the top you can also prepend the note title for important notes with emojis and make it distinct from other notes because it's an important note right the next tip is to show the backlinks in our editor window if you want to see the backlinks to this file then you will need to first open the sidebar and go to this backlinks pane then you can view the backlinks to this note but there's an easier way to do it you can go to command palette and search for backlinks and here's the option to toggle backlinks in documents if you enable this option you will have this backlinks view for your notes i can also open other notes and it will still display the backlinks uh, in at the bottom of this node you can disable it by toggling the backlink again go to command palette source for backlink toggle backlinks and it will hide from here the next tip i want to show is how you can create a better looking properties view that i have over here so let me go to today's note and here are some properties that i use in my daily note and you can see this is a better properties view if you go up here there are no properties visible in this note itself but they are visible in the sidebar let me show you for that first you will need to disable these properties in this note you can go to settings go to editor and here is the option properties in documents you will need to make it hidden if you make it visible these properties will be, will be visible over here if you choose source mode if you go to editing they will have this source view but if you choose hidden they will be hidden from here now you will need to go to command palette and source for file property so file properties and this is also a obsidian core plugin you can go to settings core plugins and here you have this properties view if you have not enabled this plugin then this will not work so this properties view shows the metadata for your files in the sidebar so go to command palette search for file property now this will open a new pane with this with the, all the file properties you can drag it down now this way you will have the properties view of your notes right into the sidebar so these were some tips and tricks to help you navigate your knowledge base in obsidian like a pro i hope you enjoyed this video i also have an obsidian ninja newsletter which you can subscribe to to get more obsidian tips and tricks thank you for watching this video see you next time bye bye